Hey, hey, it's JJ. Welcome back to my channel. And this is like um, a get ready with me slash I'm going to be talking about um, co-parenting, how it's been, um, a little update or whatever. And this get ready with me is kind of kind of like um, I'm getting ready for a job interview um, at a really nice establishment which is why again I had to um dye my hair black because they don't want any color in your hair and even though I adore the wigs what I'm going to be doing I probably won't feel like always putting on a wig so I want to um you know make it easier for me because with the time that I'm going in I won't be able to do much. I won't have the time to do much to my hair anymore. I'm going to be going in to work at 3 and coming home around, well, getting off around 11. I'm saying around 11 because you never um, get off exactly when you're supposed to get off. This is me spritzing my hair down. I think I sprayed the water already, and I'm just putting in, you know, some moisturizer just to moisturizer i'm just putting in some hair products like some leave-ins just to um moisturize my hair that's what happens when you're trying to do three things at once i should just do the co-parenting thing later but i want to just throw it all in here why not right so of course i'm just getting my hair together just flatten it because i want to do um a high puff so this is me just brushing it on out. But um Yeah, so the job I'm getting, I'll I'll be coming home probably around uh eleven thirty ish, maybe twelve. And even though I don't like that schedule, the job and the money that I'll be getting is gonna be kinda worth it. Um, it's gonna suck because I did get the job that I currently have because of the time I would get off. But the thing is, when I... Sorry about that. So, um, I got that job because the time was like, I go in at 8 o'clock and I get off at 3. Or sometimes I would get off at um, 4, no later than 5. Which would be great because my son has to go to school and that means I can get him up, get him ready for school, get him on the bus and then head straight for work. And because we live with my mom right now, she um could get him from the bus stop and I'll be coming home. You know, he gets off the bus at 2.30ish, sometimes 2.40 and I'll be coming home at 3. So it worked out perfectly for me, but the pay sucked. If we want to get our own place, I can't just settle on $11, $12, $13 an hour. I can't afford a place with that. So I had to make a um I had to make a um decision which was, you know, I could say stagnant and just work this job and just try to collect the little bit of bonuses that you get throughout the years. Or I can just go ahead and try to get this money. And unfortunately, I am a single mother, so I need to get this money. This is my little two-piece wig. Uh, I like it because I, I don't have to wrap around my hair. I just bought a bun, and it comes with bangs. Because, you know, I got the big forehead, so I wanted the little Chinese bangs to cover it up. But I'm getting ready to put this on. And don't worry. I know it's going to look a little tacky and a little messed up. I'm going to switch it up and fix it. And also try on another little um, wig. I mean, not wig piece. <laughs> another little bun piece. Like a curly one. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to fix it. Don't be judging me too hard. But, um, yeah, so <sighs> the thing that sucks about this is... I will only get to see my son when I take him to the bus stop. I'm going to get him ready, get him dressed. I put him on the bus stop. I put him on the bus stop. 
I put him on the bus and then I'll be sleeping until it's time for me to go to work. And then I have to be at work at three. So I have to leave the house around 2.30ish, which is about the time he comes home, which would be the time that my mom would probably get him from the bus stop. So I won't even get to see him get off the bus or give him a kiss and be like, mommy, I'll see you later. And then by the time I get home, he'll be asleep. So my only interaction with him would really be on my days off. And when I take him to the bus stop, which really sucks because, you know, we're really close and I want that interaction with my son. I don't want to be that mom that works 24-7 or all the time and who can't really be there for her son. Like, we're working on math problems. We got a math book we do together. We got reading stuff we do. He has to read me a book at night. He, like, we have a routine and I'm messing up this whole entire routine taking this offer but again we need the money and it's a good opportunity and I don't know I don't want to just let opportunities go by but I also don't want to miss time with my son you know what I'm saying it's a it's a catch-22 with both of them and people say money is not everything it's not but god forbid something happens to my parents and we don't have enough money to survive we don't have no money to even go anywhere so while a lot of people might be like well money's not everything well money isn't but we need it to survive I mean look what's going on around the world like like people are living in their RVs that's something I was thinking about as well like people can't afford these high a rents like I just was about to move into an apartment and the rent was supposed to be like 769 or 787 I believe it might have been 787 and the paycheck I was making I was only making $740 like and that's including overtime and that was like I was making $12 an hour for every two weeks I'm only bringing home a 740 something dollar check and including child support, I was like, I can kind of make it work. You know, I can kind of make it work. Um, it was supposed to be like a two-bedroom loft type of situation. And I was really aiming for that. And then I go in and the two bedrooms, it looked like what my son's room would be like, looked like a closet. Like it, li- it literally looked like a closet. And I might insert a picture here just to show you like the pictures online and you know online they make it look bigger than what it looked like in person so once I show you you're gonna be like wow that is really small and I was like I can't even fit half his stuff in this little apartment and she was like yeah it's that's for our one bedroom but I was like on the site it says for like a two bedroom you know it's 787 I showed her and she was like yeah I don't know why that's like that it's not it's not that our two bedrooms are eight eighty nine, and I was like, "Yo, <laughs> girl, I can't afford this, and for this, I'm paying almost nine hundred dollars." Like, so that was a big disappointment, but it was also like a wake up call. Like, you know, you can't, you can't have everything. I can't have the job with the, you know, great time and everything and get the, you know, money too. I can't, not right now anyway. So (laughs) yeah, I had that. I have to make a sacrifice and I just want to let y'all know right now that I went in, I made homegirl laugh a lot and I got the job, baby. So high five to me, bring out the champagne, sparkly water, whatever you want to do. I got it. And I'll be going in for my orientation like on the 30th. So yay, Jasmine. But um, yeah, I'm hoping it's nothing but up from here. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Oh, um, well, you know, also, let me go ahead and just 
kind of talk about the co-parenting situation as well because mostly I'm just going to be, you know, fixing my hair and you're going to pretty much see what I'm doing with this. So co-parenting, what made me want to talk about co-parenting is that I just recently, like last week, um, saw this couple, Gin and Juice. Love their channel. I used to watch them all the time. I don't know if I was subscribed or not because I hadn't got anything from them. So I might not have been subscribed. But every time they popped up on my feed, I watched them because they did pranking channels. And, you know, they were really big when all the pranking stuff was going on. And I thought their pranks were, like, actually funny and kind of cute. So I watched that. Um, so I don't know all that happened. But I do know that they are getting a divorce right now. They're, or maybe they're not. I know they're separated. Let me say that. For sure, I know they're separated. And they're co-parenting right now. And I do know infidelity was part of the situation and some other stuff. I don't know all of it because all of that was gone. Whatever was happening just... You know, right now I'm seeing apology videos and stuff like that. So I don't know exactly what happened. And I'm actually proud of the girl because, like, she seriously bossed up and was like, we're going to get our own place. That's what I mean when I say I, sh I wish, you know, I wish I would have just got my own stuff. But because of certain circumstances I didn't and you know that's whatever but I like that how she's moving you know what I'm saying but also she's being you know they are being really good co-parents and I was like wow for everything that went down and happened even I was trying to do that on some level like co-parent with my ex-husband um in a, like, you know, like, I still want to live here. I still want us to, like, you know, try to slowly, like, you know, let our son know that, you know, mommy and daddy still love each other. We still care about each other, but we're just not going to be together. We're not happy together. Um, But unfortunately, y'all know the situation and know that that's not how my ex-husband was moving. Um, so fast forward, what's happening with co-parenting with us? Um, yo, we're not great. Um, uh, we're not even, well, I'm not going to say he's not trying. I'm no longer trying to co-parent properly with him. And I'm going to explain why. Um, so, you know, we've been divorced for two years now, Sep no, separated for two years now, and divorced for one year. Like, we're officially divorced for one year, starting, uh, last month. Within us, within me signing the divorce papers, I want to say two weeks after like, I officially, like, signed it. I came up to with the, I came up to my attorney's office, and she was like, yeah, we got divorce papers when you're ready to sign. I said, I'm ready. I got a ride up there. I bought my own pen and signed it, dated it. They're about to leave. So, yeah, um, after two weeks of me signing the divorce paper, he, um, called my son and was like, hey, Sebastian, I need to, um, talk to you, call daddy when you can, and, um, I was at work at that time, so when I got home, and, um, he called again, I gave the phone to my son immediately, because I thought maybe something happened, and what happened was simply him and Oreo weren't together anymore, and he felt the need to tell our son that immediately, <laughs> and he was like, you know, me and Oreo aren't together anymore. You're not going to be seeing her anymore. And that was a whole traumatic thing because my son was calling her um, mother, grandma, calling her aunt, auntie. Like, that's the stuff I hate. It's like you can move how you want to move, but don't move kids like that. Because now then I had to explain how that I mean, I had already explained that wasn't his aunt and that wasn't his grandma. But like when it really broke down 
And he was like, why can't I go see my grandma? She's not your grandma. That's why you can't go see her. They're not together. Like, I hate when people do that. If you want to claim other people, you can, but don't do that to your kids. That's crazy to me. Um, But anyway, so all of that happened, and he had enough nerve to call and was like, oh, hey, Sebastian, how are you? You know, daddy love you so much. You taking care of mommy. I love y'all, y'all. Y'all are, um, you know, y'all are my family. I love y'all. I hope y'all doing okay. And my son looked at me after listening to that voicemail that he left and was like, why is he talking like that? I was like, I don't know. And he was like, that's weird. Yep. Now, even if your five-year-old child at the time could tell that you were being weird because <laughs> he, my son knows his dad didn't like me. He he could see it, sense it, feel it. So for him to call and do all that, it was like, yeah, that's weird. And I didn't pay him no mind because I knew exactly what that was. Um, and I also knew that it wasn't going to last long, him being nice. And within 48 hours, he was dating another girl. And again, it was just, you know... I could tell this woman had kids because when she wanted to do my son hair, she made sure that he asked me. And I'm pretty sure she was like, show me the um, text messages that she said it's okay for me to touch your son's head. That's the difference between dating a person with kids and dating people without kids. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know the rules. You just know. But, um... When he was seeing this young lady, he was also seeing another young lady. Just, you know, I guess, you know how people are once they really break up with somebody. They just throw themselves out there. And I guess he was trying to cope. And I feel like he thought she would come back to him. But he didn't even give her a chance to come back. Because you already doing shisty stuff. Within three months of them being separated, he had a whole nother girlfriend, and now that was his fiance. So imagine that. First of all, you had a whole wife, and then you had a fiance while you had a wife. Then as soon as you get a divorce from your ex-wife, now you put me out. Within those three months, now you have a whole nother fiance and another situation. He wanted me to meet his fiance. I refused just because the situation just seemed messy. And I was like, I'm not about to do that. Not with her and him, but just like the whole thing in general seemed messy. And I just didn't want to do that. And I was pretty much like, no, I don't want to meet her. Leave me alone. You had a fiance literally three months ago. Like, boy, bye. I didn't think she was going to last. But... (laughs) Because of certain situations, the homegirl going to be here. (laughs) So that's what it is. Um, And I have nothing but um, semi-respect for her. I don't know her. But she never did anything to my son. And so I'm not... I'm not... um, Not liking her. I gave her my... um, Phone number in case she ever needed to, you know, contact me in case... His father couldn't contact me. And I was also being petty at the time because his dad was like, um, we kind of established something like where I would not be driving to pick my son up at night no more. Because one, I can barely drive. Y'all know I got anxiety. So me driving at night is like a no go. I didn't want to put myself and my child at risk by doing something like that. And he agreed. Now he was over this young lady's mother's house and he was like Sebastian's with his grandma y'all already know how that's gonna be if something don't work out with her and um him then I'm gonna have to explain to my son why that's not his actual grandma and stuff which is just irritating in his own because he's not explaining this stuff my son is coming to ask me I have to explain this stuff I'm tired of explaining stuff that his dad should be explaining so that's how that is but he was like oh yeah eight o'clock you can meet me at the um, pickup spot that we have. And I was like, 8 o'clock at night? No. <laughs> so I was like, well, you know, from going forward, like, you know, 
you're going to have to drop Sebastian off at my mama's house because I'm not going to be, you know, going out like that. You told me that, you know, you agreed. And he only did that because, again, the fiance um, pretty much told him that, you know, she doesn't feel comfortable driving and she has your son. She shouldn't be out at night with your son driving if it's uncomfortable for her you know compromise she had to tell him that and just how we were going back and forth with each other um texting because I thought what I was saying was pretty much cut clean cut and clean and clear and like you know if you're gonna have to um you're gonna have to drop him off at night if you're gonna do that if you're gonna keep him overnight I mean keep him at night because um you know I can't make that drive one and two I was already irritated because my son, y'all know my son, like he, if he usually is asleep by eight o'clock, hold up, I'm going to show y'all something. As a picture I took of him Tuesday, he's asleep at 7.33. Now, normally he's in bed by eight because once he goes to sleep around eight or before eight, he's a happy camper, happy kid. I can get up, we can get up, he can do his little morning routine, and we're good. If he goes to sleep any time after 8-ish, like 8.40, 9 o'clock, 9 something, then he is not good. He is upset, he's mad, he's still tired. I know, I don't know what an hour difference makes, but it makes for these kids. And with him, it's like, if I had to get in the car, drive to get him, He's going to tell me that he's hungry. He's going to see his cousins. He's going to be like, I want to play. You can't play. You got to eat. It's going to be a whole thing with me and him. Going to be arguing about him going to sleep. He's going to be crying. He's going to be fussy. He's not going to go to sleep right at the right time. He's going to turn on the TV. And then he's going to fall asleep around 9, 9.30ish. Probably 9.30ish because, again, he's going to say he's hungry and I got to feed him. Because I don't know if he ate or not. Even if his dad said, yeah, he ate. I don't, you know, I don't believe anything he say. He can tell me that the sky is blue outside and I will automatically go and check to make sure it's blue. But, yeah, with that being said, like, it's already going to be a hassle with me trying to get him up. He doesn't have to do that. I do. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, inconsiderate. Again, we were going back and forth. I said some petty stuff. I was like, um... You know, because the conversation changed so quickly. It was like, oh, well, yeah, my fiance has to, you know, prep, meal prep. So we'll probably drop him off earlier um, than the time that he's at, like around 530 or 6. And I was like, well, maybe I should co-parent with her. And he was like, all three of us need to co-parent. One, no, we don't. All three of us don't need to co-parent. Me and you are supposed to co-parent. And then whatever you want to share and discuss with her, that's on you. It would be nice if all three of us could come together and be close. Yeah, yeah, but we all know that's very rare. One. Two, I can't even co-parent with you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you going to try to bring in a third party and we can't even get our stuff together, first of all? That was stupid. But I was like, no, I'd rather co-parent with her. Because, you know what I'm saying, like, I don't have to deal with all this back and forth. She seemed like she know how to co-parent, so I'd rather co-parent with her and just leave you out. He ignored that and um, said, yeah, she been wanting to meet you. You didn't want to meet her. Naturally, you didn't even know her. It was three months, my guy. You just knew her for three months. You didn't even know her. I didn't want to know her. You running through people like water to me. So, no, I don't want to know them. And I have to explain every female you with to my son. The one before her, my son was having a whole meltdown because he loved his loved the girl's daughter. Like, you know, friends. And the little girl told my son that she was going to be his sister. <laughs> so now my son was like, well, why can't I see that little girl? Like, I miss her. He miss her to this day. And that's the, that's the stuff I'm talking about. Like, I don't want to go through that. And I don't want him to go through that. But I definitely don't want to go through that either. Like, I'm not putting myself in situations and in your situationships, relationships, whatever. I don't want to. 
Um, but regardless of all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that I just, I'm at the point where I just don't take it no more. Because he's the type to throw pebbles and then hide his hands. And I throw bricks back and show him mine. Because I'm so tired of that. And there's some things that he takes that are triggers. You know, like if, like he'll be like, oh, that's why I'm going to get involved with CS and talk about lowering child support. Like, you know, I fought to get child support. He was only going to pay for four years and then he didn't want to pay me no more child support. Didn't want to take care of his kid no more, basically. And I had to fight. And we just settled this. You know what I'm saying? I just signed divorce papers. We just settled this. He hasn't even been paying the whole um, amount for the child support for four, like for a year yet. He hasn't been doing it. Like, and you already want to switch up. So, you know, anytime he involves courts, child support, any, anything like any legal matter to me, it's like a trigger to me. And I start being real petty and I start being just a butt. And again, that's a trigger. I'm trying to work on that. I'm actually wanting to go to therapy about it. I've actually reached out to someone, talked to them about making appointments to go to therapy. But I also did um, need to make more money to afford to go to therapy. So I want to do better. Um, I don't want nobody to trigger me into something that... You know, it's just ridiculous. I could ignore that and be like, do you, boo? And just... <laughs> left it alone but I didn't um I, I got baited and I went in for it I was like okay you want to play with me let's play but I didn't go too hard you know what I'm saying because I'm still you know regardless though I'm just like he just triggers me and he what somebody else might read in the text messages and be like okay well it's not that deep well you know they weren't with me through the journey with him like a lot of y'all seen what it was so you know probably what would trigger me and if I showed you the text message you'd be like yeah that's petty why he being petty and I I did that um a few times because I was like I let my best friend he gonna always be real with me and tell me when I'm being a little dramatic um but I would let him read it and be like hey what do you think about that? And he'd be like, why he bring that up? I don't know. Why he oversharing with you like that? I don't know. And he'll read my responses if I respond. Because, uh, like, you know, I don't really respond to anything. If it don't have anything to do with my son, I don't respond. I don't respond to him throughout the week too much. Um, unless he leaves a little voicemail. I let my son listen to it. I let him send voicemail back. I let them talk to each other. If I'm at the house present, um, with the phone, but you guys know that I got my son a tablet, got him a watch phone, I got him all these computers, a computer, flip computer, um, phone, and he can contact his son that kind of way, but still he contacts me through my phone, which is like, you know, <sighs> but I don't want to rob my son of not being able to talk to his dad when he wants. So I do let him do that. But we are setting boundaries now to where it's like, hey, you can leave voicemails for him, for uh, your dad on my phone. But you need to start using your own electronics to communicate with your dad so y'all can get into use to of doing that. Because there literally shouldn't be anything he needs to say to me unless, you know, is involving our son if something happens to our son. But he doesn't even do that. My son could do a whole flip and hurt his leg and he won't contact me and be like he's hurt contact me and be like oh he's sick and all this my son comes home and has to tell me yeah I was hurt I hurt my leg real bad oh don't worry about why I'm limping it's because my leg don't worry about um this I got sick and threw up all at um daddy's house and stuff like that I never know unless my son tell me and I used to be um, the type to tell him, even if he got like a bug bite, like, hey, he's got a bug bite on his leg. Um, I got ointment for it. Don't worry about it. I put it in his bag. And so, um, yeah. And y'all know at one point he was like, I don't need your help. I don't need nothing from you. Just make sure my son has a change of clothes so he could put him on when he go back to your house. That's all he worried about. Now, all of a sudden, he 
well, it would be helpful if, you know, you had his medicines because my son has a sinus, like a sinus problem. So he has to actually take like a little medication for that. And, uh, you know, he wanted to co-parent with me so bad and and just, you know, split everything down to half so bad. But he don't buy no medicines. He don't buy the, um, I bought medicines. I bought the, um, breathing treatment. I bought the breathing, um, machine for him, all of that. And my thing is this, like, he even said to me that he appreciate me buying all my son the stuff that he can't buy, yet you want to take child support from me. You want to lower it even more than it is. But you continuously want me to pay for everything for him. And not only that, he, like, if my son goes somewhere, if he need extra money, I'm putting it in the bag. And I, I realized when my son talks to me about it, where that extra money was going, so I will no longer be putting it in the bag. You try and take child support. I can't give him extra money for things if you're taking it because that has to go into something else. So it's kind of selfish. He's still being selfish and just worried about himself and not the child that he helped me create. It's a lot. We go back and forth a lot to the point, like I said, now I don't really communicate. It is very minimum. You can look through my phone and you'll see nothing but him contacting me about little stuff and I won't respond um, I don't answer phone calls unless my son is with him on the weekends. And I know he tests me on that because he would call and text. I wouldn't respond. And then when he has our son, he'll call and text. <laughs> and I'll only respond <laughs> when he has him. But I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't have to respond. I don't have to pick up your call. I don't have to do any of that. But when you have my son, then yeah, I will. And, you know... I wore this, by the way. I wore all this. I wore that shirt. I'm not sure if I um, changed my shirt or not, because when I do voiceovers, unless I'm just, like, specifically talking about what I'm doing in a video, I don't look at the video. My eyes are, like, wandering all around my room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what part this is if I tried on a different shirt yet. Okay, here it is. I'm about to try on a different shirt. It's too tight. I can't wear it. I had to hang it up. I'm getting a little thick, as you can see. I done lost a little weight since this clip, but I'm still a little thick. Look at my stomach. Oh, child, that's how you can know when you're getting there. I've been um, doing sit-ups, and this uh, lady, this Ting, I think her name is Ting. I got to look at it again. Um, it's an Asian lady that does work out and is supposed to give you, like, a abs in seven days. I've been doing that, and we're going to see. But, um, yeah, um, he's still very much selfish. And anytime he be nice to me, it's because he's getting something that he wants. If he doesn't get what he wants, then he's not nice. Um, I'm not worried too much about it. I haven't talked to any of his family lately his uncle did text me after a few months like I text him but he didn't text me back for a long while until like I want to say three days ago um I text him back and yeah just like a light chat like hey how have you been and stuff like that um so I don't talk to any of his family and that's cool you know we weren't really vibing or speaking even when we were going through the thing. And I kind of had a feeling they liked Oreo more because they really got to know her and he threw her in their faces. So it was funny to see how when he left Oreo, he was like, yeah, no, nah, y'all can't talk to Oreo. Y'all need to talk to my new girl. And they were like, no, that's wrong. What are you doing? Like, then you just like, wasn't she just your fiance? And now you got another one and you got this other thing happening. Like, no, but, um, like family, they're going to stick beside him. And even though they may not like the situation, they're going to be there and support him. And that's family, you know, um, yeah, um, co-parenting, it, it does not work. 
And even when he be like, yeah, I got therapy because I was going through a lot. His therapy consists of any girl that he's with. He talks to them, vents to them, and they tell them their opinion or what they think it is. And naturally, they can't really do that because they're not a psychiatrist. Just like if I talk to my homeboy and tell him everything, he's not my psychiatrist. He going to tell me stuff that he want, like I want to hear because he's my friend. He's on my team. Well, he don't really tell me stuff I want to hear. He'd be like, nah, you was a butt right here. You could have been more compassionate. And I'd be like, <laughs> why I got to be compassionate? Why I got to be the bigger person? I'm tired of being a bigger person. He'd be like, I know you are, but still, Jasmine, you got to be the bigger person. You are the bigger person, so be the bigger person for your, for y'all child. He'll see regardless when he gets older, what the situation was. You don't have to worry about all that. You just try to be the bigger person for your son. And I'm still tired of hearing that. <laughs> I don't want to be the bigger person no more. But, um, yeah, that's not therapy. That's just venting. And he actually needs to go seek therapy. Because, again, they're going to tell you anything that you want to hear spits like, especially since they're just hearing your side. And I'm pretty sure that he's still going around telling people I cheated and did X, Y, and Z knowing that I didn't. And that everything that he's probably telling them that I did is the things that he did to me. I'm not worried about it anymore. It is what it is. I'm just, you know, I'm over it. I seen him for who he was, and I can still see him for who he is. And I'm pretty sure the fiance is starting to get an inkling of who he is because he quickly left the relationship with Oreo and got in a relationship with her. And I'm sure that he did not switch up and change that quick. And um, I tell you what, he got a type. She don't look like um, Oreo. I'm talking about like he always go for the church girls with bands <laughs> every single one of these chicks have been a church girl with bands and um there's a lot of stuff he told me when he broke up with oreo and i had to tell him like um i don't need all that i don't need to hear this and i don't need the story i don't need the story of what happens between y'all i literally wrote him that i was like i'm gonna laugh because i'm not celebrating anything for you and I'm not um, feeling bad for anything for you. Y'all shouldn't have been together point blank, period, while you were married. Like, I don't have sympathy for you, but I can tell you right now, he probably still got mad feelings for that girl. And he about to get married. I feel like he do. You can't get, you literally risked your entire marriage and then threw it away everything with it for this female that you thought you were gonna marry and then turn around and was just trying to I guess get over her and very quickly found himself in a situation that you know he had to step up to the plate with and now he um yeah I don't think he's over Oreo I don't think he got past it I don't think he even tried to work on himself and get past it um the first thing out his mouth to me when all of it was going down was that he was gonna um not worry about any female like he was casually dating and he just wanted to be a father and work on his relationship with his son and like I said they lasted about 48 hours <laughs> 48 hours um, there's a lot of stuff that has been happening that made me want to punch him in the throat. A lot of stuff that Sebastian comes home and tells me that makes me very upset and very like, uh, I can tell you one thing though, almost every female he's been with aside from Oreo, cause that's a whole nother thing, but aside from Oreo, all the mothers <laughs> that he has been with, they have treated my son well and pretty much what their father lacks they pick up on like if my son needs chapstick just chapstick and he's got a bag with all of his stuff that he needs and um yeah just something simple like that they'll give him if he needs anything they'll make sure it happens and 
yeah, so I don't have no no animosity towards the fiance. Um if me and his father had ended on a better note, I would have been like super excited to meet her. I would have been super excited to get um <laughs> get something for um her child and everything cuz you know, I love kids. I, I'm that person. Like, I would love to be able to come to the birthday party with a nice gift. And, you know what I'm saying? I, I love doing stuff like that. But unfortunately, we did not end on good terms. And I cannot be around him. Look at me putting a new one on. I cannot be around him. Um, he When we go do drop-offs and stuff, like, he might be like, hey, um, I tried calling you or texting you. Um, I didn't get no response. A lot of my calls are on green. What's going on? I like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't look at him. Like it is very rare for me to even look at him because I cannot stomach it. I just want to hit him every time. Like there's nothing, nothing about him that I just respect. I don't respect him and. You know, I just, like, once you see a person for who they are, you just kind of see that. And I don't want to be around him. I'm so used to, like, if I don't like you, I ain't got to talk to you, see you, be around you, deuces. And because that's my son's father, like, I have to see him. But, again, what's great about this new work um, experience is that I ain't got to see him no more. Like, it's rare that we communicate, and now it's rare that I have to be, you know, visible. Because every Friday, I'm going to be leaving my car for my mom to do the drop-off instead of me doing the drop-off. Because I'll be at work, and I don't want to be present. And I don't have to be now. Like, it's pretty sad that it's like that, but it is like that. I wish I had a third party. And we didn't have to talk to each other at all. And um, if y'all remember, um, his uncle was that for us. And his uncle was, like, uh, pretty good. He listened to what I had to say. He listened to what um, my son's father had to say. And he was mostly like, hey, nephew, she's not asking you for much. She's just asking you not to bring another female to her parents' house while she's hurting. You just, you know, separated from her. It's only been a week and you're bringing this female to her house and it's disrespectful. You know, don't do that. And he was like, well, I don't feel like I shouldn't have to. Why Why can't I bring my girl to there? And he was like, because it's disrespectful. I don't, I don't know how else to tell you that. You don't feel like it's disrespectful? And then, um... Just him, you know, lying, showing messages like I was doing something or threatening him and stuff like that. And then the uncle was like, yeah, I mean, I seen all this. And then I would show him the entire text message, the entirety of the situation, the conversations. And he was like, wow, he really manipulated this situation. And I was like, yep. And then he found out that, um, you know, he lied about everything. Like this girl wasn't just some girl it just came in and we hadn't been separated for so long. Like, you know, he lied about everything. And and he was upset and kind of like, you know, that's wrong. Like, even if you don't want to be with her, like, you can't, you know, be disrespectful to the mother of your child. You can't do that. And um, he didn't care. And he didn't like the advice, so that third party situation ended he ain't talked to his uncle no more he don't talk to his uncle still so that's what that is so I feel like any other third party even if it's his fiance I feel like once that is open it just it'll be just you know so I don't want to I don't want to do that whatever he got going on with her I want it to stay over there (laughs) <laughs> don't bleed over here into my life. I'm trying to win, and I don't have time for that. Um, yeah, no, I don't. 
I wish, like, there's times that I'd be like, I'd rather just talk to her and be like, hey, what time is pickup time, drop off time? You can ask your fiance um, when he would like me to drop our son off and stuff like that and, you know, just go through that. <laughs> but she might be worse than him. So, you know, I ain't even trying. It's enough with one person. I ain't about to go through it with two, you know? I, I can't. My bestie thinks that um, eventually I'll probably end up co-parenting through her. <laughs> he thinks just because um, she seemed mature in that one text message she sent me. He was like, you'll probably end up going through her, through a lot of stuff. And um, I feel like that's so sad. I want to, like, actually co-parent, but... It's hard to co-parent when somebody just sees their point of view. Like, there's no, there's no, um, let, well, let me kind of see it through her, you know, from her perspective. It's just like, you know what, I got X, Y, and Z going on, so and that was another thing why I wanted child support, because clearly I didn't believe that he would try and um, honestly take care of Sebastian and I don't think it's not that he wouldn't really truly want to hopefully he would I just feel like because he's so always talking about money he would be like oh I don't have the money to get his medicine this week oh I don't have the money to do that oh can you see what you can do and because of that just because of that I was like no it's just so better if you just give me child support because he's not one of those men you could just talk to I've seen guys literally like put themselves on child support or literally just be like you know I call my um son's mother and ask her if she need anything I see guys make the phone call in front of me and be like hey do you need anything do the kids need anything like is everything good and I wish I had that and I wouldn't even take anything from him it's just like just to have that just to have somebody that'd be like hey do you need something like if you need something let me know because I'm that type of person like I literally text him and was like hey if our son needs something you know let me know if he needs x y and z if he's you know just let me know if he needs money for something let me know because I'm that type of person like if he ever said I don't even have groceries in the refrigerator for Sebastian this weekend I would go buy groceries and put it in his car and be like, all right, this is for uh, Sebastian. I got you some stuff, too, in case you want to eat something. Like, I'm that type of person. And it truly sucks that I don't have anybody that's like that for me. You know, you always want somebody that would go hard for you like you go hard for them. Even if it's like a little soft hard, you know. <laughs> you want somebody that would do the same. But I don't have nobody that would do that. He's not the person that would do that. If anything, I would call my bestie and be like, hey, can I have some milk? And I've never had to do that. He knows I don't even take anything from him. I remember there was a time he was like, who's taking care of you? You sound awful. And I was like, I'm taking care of me. And he just dropped by and gave me some, like, a thing, like a whole thing of like chicken noodle soup and some um what do you call that stuff ginger ale and like I was just like that's so sweet yo that was too like to have a friend like that that was too too sweet and I cash tapped him <laughs> money for that and he was like I didn't even spend that much on that Jasmine like you don't need to do that and I was he was like I did that because I wanted to do that for you and I was like no but it was nice and I cashed up him the money because that's the type of person I am so it just you can see the back is kind of messed up now 
it was cute at first. Now it's all messed up. But I'm still going to go in like that because she ain't going to see the back of my head. And she didn't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I'm i that type of person. Like, if he ever in life would have been like, if we ended on a good note and he ever in life was like, hey, I cannot pay you the child support this month. Like, I'm really struggling, Jasmine. I would have been like, cool. Next month, make sure you have it. Okay, that's it. Or if he would have been like, I got this child support. I'm just going to give you half. Can I give you the other half later on? I would have been like, cool. If he only said, I only have $150 to give you. Like, I can give you the other like 100 later. I would have been like, cool. <laughs> but because he is the type of person he is, because he would not do that for me, I feel like I shouldn't have to do that for him. Like, literally, I had to beg this man for a bed for me and our son to sleep on when we moved to my mother's house. He didn't give me a mattress for it. He didn't give me the box spring. He literally just got me the frame of the bed. And I had to beg for that. And I had to keep, like, telling him, like, me and your son need somewhere to sleep. Like, it's cool you don't like me, bro. I don't know why you're treating me this way. But still, I got our kid. You don't want him here. So... At least help me, yo. And that was horrible in itself. I never had to beg anybody for anything in my life. And for someone to be my best friend at that time, like, he was, like, my go-to as your husband is supposed to be, like, to have to beg him for something. That was, that whole thing was, like, It was it was tough for me because you don't ever want to feel like that with your significant other. But like I said, you know, it that is what it is. That's probably something I need to go to therapy about too. Like just the abandonment, the betrayal, like having the you know just I got so much pride in me and like. In certain moments throughout that um, relationship, the pride, like, kind of left. I, like, showed vulnerability, and I still got shitted on. So now I'm in this place where I'm like, well, why do I need to show anybody anything? Like, I'm hard. And I can get why a lot of women are like that now. Like, people want you to be soft so bad with them. But you like, I was soft in this relationship. I was so soft. And then they messed up and they hurt me. And now I'm hard because of this individual. But I don't treat people, you know, horrible or anything like that. I'm just more cautious with myself. And even when it comes to people wanting to talk to me, like, sometimes I think, yeah, maybe we can talk. But then I think about my son and I'm like, I don't know you enough for you to ever be around my child like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so cautious. And you have to be as a mom. You have to be cautious. You have to be hard because now you're playing mommy and daddy. So, like I said, I'm happy I got my best friend because he do. He, like, straight up just when I need to just mentally, like, get some stuff off my chest or emotionally like vent or anything he's like right there he, like hold up he'll be in the middle of doing a game and he'll be like hold up let me let me go over here tell me what you need to tell me a lot of times i'm like no go ahead and finish and call me back because i'll be here and there's times where he even like my son is gone for the weekend he'll come pick me up take me back to his house let me have the whole living room where I could just watch movies while he in the room chilling, doing whatever he doing. He'll come in and watch a movie with me, go in his room, go to sleep, and let me crash on the couch just so I can get away or just, to, like, so I can get out the house. So he always going to be straight for me. Like, my guy even helped me, like, 
He talked to me about credit, how to build it, taught me how to do it. And I went from having like a 524 to a whole 742 just because my dude just sat right there and was like, look, let me teach you about credit. Let me teach you how you move. And he was like, you know, he he just helped me because he was like, I want to see you do good. I want to see you get that house. I want to see you get everything you want. You deserve it. Like, just the respect and the pep talks and the, you know, I got your back. We all need that one friend and a lot of us don't even have that. So that's, that's tough. And we were just talking about how most of our friends are divorced. <laughs> They're getting divorced or they're with somebody and they're fighting 24 seven. They're not happy. Like they're, or they're with the person and like, they don't even get to see each other because one person works so much and the other person, you know, they got the kids and stuff. Like it's just, it's sad. It's all going down so sad. I'm showing y'all my earrings. But, um, I don't think anybody prepares themselves to be a single mother. And that kills me when I read comments of people like, oh, well, you shouldn't have laid with this person without a ring. I laid with a man and had the ring. I had the ring before the baby. I was married to him. And then we had the baby later on and still I'm a single mother, so that logic makes no freaking sense. Like, to see people shit on people that just trusted somebody completely and had a baby with them, and they're like, oh, they blame them for that. Like, how you gonna blame them? But refuse to blame the other person. And some men do that. They be with the girl for so long, and they love them, and all of a sudden the girl, like, here's the baby. And then dip off and she partying, clubbing, living her best life. And dude is at home with the baby all day. And now he's a single father. Like, it's not, it's not, no, like, that's horrible to put that on people. Nobody deserves to be a single mother or a single father. We lay down with these people and we expect them to, you know, level up and be there. And if you can't be there, show some type of class and be there for your kid in the way that you would want. And that kills me, too. So many men come up to me and be like, well, my father wasn't ish. He didn't do this, 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 and that. But then they talk to me. I'm like, but you doing the same thing to your kid. So you don't think they're going to feel the same way about you? And all they can see is their own selfish view and what they didn't get. But not even trying to see what they didn't do for their son or pour that in. The same with the women. Like... I know a guy who is a single father, and he was waiting on his um baby mother. I'm talking my best friend now. Waiting on his baby mother to come pick up their son for his birthday, and she never came, and the little boy was crying. He was devastated, and he was like, that's messed up, Jay. Like, that's messed up that she did that to our son. Like, she ain't going to never change. That stuff is crazy to me. And I feel like every day I'm preparing myself for stuff like that. Every day. I shouldn't have to, but again, that's what, that's life. It shouldn't be that way, but people are that way. No matter how much we try to, like, choose. And I chose the church boy, the smart boy, the boy in school that got all the good grades, the sweetheart, the one that opened the doors for people, the one that started preaching in church. Like, I chose that. And still, I got cheated on. I got divorced, and I'm a <laughs> single mom. Still. So it doesn't matter. Like, it's just that person, you know? Co-parenting is just... It's a lot. It's Why would I ask when, when you brought it up? I added this extra thing because I know I talk too much and I talk a lot. Yeah. So I was adding a little more clips of everything. Like, I'm about to take some vitamins. I'm just showing y'all because <laughs> I was like, I know I'm going to be over talking and I'm going to need a little more time to probably finish whatever I got to say. So this is what this is. But yeah, um, I'm going to wrap it up. As far as co-parenting, 
it ain't that great. Um, it may never be. It may never be good. We may never see eye to eye. We may always have like problems, and I feel like we like my son will be eighteen, and as soon as that boy turn like fourteen or thirteen. I'm 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 throwing in the towel, bro. That's how my mindset is right now. I hope that I don't. I hope that I can still be strong and like, you know. But as soon as he turned 13, I know he can talk to you. He can tell you about the games. He can tell you what he need. He can tell you where to beat him. He can tell you all of this. And that's how it's going to be. Mama is done and not speaking. The vitamin C is so, it's so sour. But, you know, it's vitamin C. <sighs> But yeah, I'm I'm done. Like that's I I am done. I don't want any of it anymore. I'm gonna be paying for my son's cell phone bill. He gonna be able to talk to him. If his dad don't pick up, if his dad's too busy, if his dad like don't even wanna make that phone call or my son don't wanna talk to him, that's crazy. That's gonna be on them. I, I want to, like, be free of it, and that's kind of selfish, but for my own mental state, I want to be free from it. Again, there is nothing that I need to talk to this man about unless something happens to our son. I don't need to have conversation, and he don't need to have conversation with me. I wish co-parenting was better. I wish we could have been better. I wish we could have found a medium. I wish a lot of things, but it didn't happen. And our co-parenting is just sucky. And like I said, I was listening to Jen and Juice, and I was like, that's beautiful what they got. It's beautiful. I wish we all could do stuff like that, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm part of the people that just can't and it's not because I lack communication because I try so hard to communicate and I even talk differently to communicate with him and sometimes that's tiring it's like I don't need to talk to you this way you know what I'm saying you know what it is but again that's how it is like just with that eight o'clock thing like just somebody being understanding and being like, hey, yeah, I know, and that's messing up his bedtime. I want to spend a little extra more time with him. So, yeah, to not inconvenience you, I'm going to go bring him to your mom's house and drop him off. Because that's what I would do. But not him. He's just like, no, you know, I'm going to drop him off here and be there. And then it's like, I want to be petty and not show up, but I cannot not show up for my son. <laughs> So, yeah, our co-parenting isn't really where it's at. Um, Still don't wish him, you know, suckiness, but it is what it is. So, thank you guys for watching, and I love you. Please come back. Bye. Oh, yeah. And a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye, babes. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.